Alright guys, welcome back. I hope everyone's doing good. Hanging in there. Uh, honestly, I feel bad for um, the entrepreneurs out there. If your business is struggling. I've talked to a few. And um, I'm going to talk about that. First of all, not financial advice. Consult your licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. These are just my own opinions. I could be completely wrong investing trading it's all extremely volatile and extremely risky do not invest anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over and i mean that so stock market it's just ripping higher right so in this video i'm going to talk about big news events and um give you guys my opinion uh i just want to say one thing when we look back on this, you know, hindsight 2020, <laughs> hindsight 2020, remember my um, Economist Magazine uh, video? Well, it's funny, right? Um, it was hindsight 2020. When we look back on this, I think we're going to see this as sort of a commie revolution and a takeover by uh, the megacorps and just destruction of the middle class or what was left of it and sort of a wealth transfer in that sense it's just a new paradigm right and it's funny they always do it. every 10 years <laughs> something big happens um, I'm just gonna leave it at that so all small businesses are just annihilated. I mean, I, I've been driving around for a few days, just doing errands, running here and there. I'm not, I don't live in fear, guys. Matter of fact, um, always being in isolation and not exposing yourself to the elements by having something on your face, it probably destroys your immune system. Anyways, oh, and a plant tested positive there's an african um it's on my twitter an african president who had a bunch of things tested and they came back as positive um what was i going with this anyways i'm i'm driving around you know i drove into the city this and that i mean it already looks third world <laughs> it really does it already looks if you just open your eyes and look around and you drive into urban areas once there used to be many small shops everywhere and now they're just all either empty because they've already cleaned them out or still shut down and more than likely if they're not shut down they will be and the only thing you're going to have left are these big box stores it's just a nightmare that's not good most people are employed by small businesses guys well, you know, these guys, they don't like competition. Okay? Let's just leave it at that. Why do you think I have to watch what I say <laughs> when I make these videos, right? Because uh, they don't want me saying certain things. Um, like the truth. So, let's say high schoolers and young people, their first jobs are usually for the larger percentage they're hired by small business owners because one you know they're not going to provide them with all kinds of benefits and this and that and high pay because you're young you're not experienced right but that's not the point the point is you get life experience when you're young and you get hired by a small business owner you build up you know uh, experience and working uh, running a register r running books uh, you get a good work ethic 
and you become somebody <laughs> in this world. Well, I posted this before I get into all the news, and there's a lot of good news. So you're going to want to watch all of this video. Hopefully it won't run too long. Uh, every time I say that, it does. Uh, well, you know what? Expand your expan uh, your attention span because this world is it's going to become very unforgiving in the near future. So businesses discover employees would rather stay at home and collect unemployment during this uh, situation, this crisis. So this is what I wrote. If they bring out UBI, which is universal basic income, then most of the population will not work. There will be less goods and services chased by monopoly money, which is true. If everyone's sitting at home, not everyone, but a lot more people, uh, and I'll get to the unemployment numbers and all that. You're not going to believe it. Um, but, you know, they're still buying things. But mainly they're not going to buy big ticket items because they don't know when the gravy train ends. A lot of them will try to save some of it. But then eventually they're going to realize that um, if they keep it in the bank, it's losing like 5% like every quarter or something. Because inflation is going to pick up and negative interest rates are pretty much already here um and that's what happens when you have negative interest rates you pay them money to keep your money safe and that's another reason why they want to get rid of cash because you can't opt out you can't put it underneath your mattress and pay the bank like interest every month or fees basically uh because there's negative interest rates there's no your money is not gaining any value by you holding it. It's losing value. It's losing value in the bank. And then it's losing even more value when you go to shop. And you're going to start seeing shrinkflation real in your face soon. You get smaller, you get bigger packages filled with air, less food. You'll see. Anyways, but that's why I say we're the first phase of stagflation. Big things maybe vehicles and homes will drop in price. Oh, they, they might prop that up. We'll see. But they should drop in price while everyday things go up in price because there's less goods being made, less services being provided because more people, because a lot of people lost their jobs and a bunch of small businesses went out of business. So now they're sitting at home on their asses collecting money, right? So they'll buy all the things they need to survive. And then the things that you need to survive, like food, will go up in price. On top of that, we have the supply chains broken. And globalization's broken. So you're not going to get subsidized cheap cheap Chinese crap. And it's it's perfect recipe. All right. So I'm just going to read it real quick. This is the perfect recipe for inflation. This is also a great way to destroy the economy. One, shut down the economy. A, a complete overreaction. It, it was. Uh, two, discourage people from working and make them dependent on the government. That's pretty much what it does, right? And then you'll do whatever they say because then they'll take the teat away. Um, and then you get... That's why certain areas like the hood <laughs> is um it doesn't work right because i i'm not gonna get into it but trust me um whatever they give you is never enough and then it's gonna lose value and then crime is gonna go up all right three break the supply chain and globalism causing shortages and most things four all of the cheap money aka credit cr created destroys more businesses and bankrupts the states and the reaction will be to raise you know revenue for the states meanwhile negative interest rates and inflation will eat away at your savings and to pay for those and and whoever's left working will have to pay more into the system because now we have more horses in the buggy than horses pulling the buggy. Literally. Literally. This is basic math. There's more people not, not working in the U.S. than people working. And this is global as well. This would be the same in everywhere. Pretty much globally. That's why it's a 
It's like commie revolution, pretty much. Like, they're doing this on purpose to turn everyone into... Uh, listen, when you take money from them, it's not free. You're now in, now you're a slave, so now you're going to do whatever they tell you. Alright, I don't know if this will turn into Mad Max scenario, but a, you know, a revolution or Soviet-style collapse is very, very likely. And that's my opinion. Maybe in the next few years. Or less. Also, the 20 to 25% of the people in stocks, mainly boomers, are cashing out their retirements at an increasing pace as they all retire. And are also, and not just that, as inflation goes up, they're going to have to cash out to survive, right? And are also collecting unfunded entitlements like Social Security, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, all of that stuff. Pensions, which are all bust. They're all bankrupt for the next 10 to 20 years. Um, now, again, let me talk about this real quick. The pensions. So the states want to get bailed out. It's because especially the lefty ran states, their pensions are all bankrupt. They've all gone bust. So is the Fed, federal government going to bail them out? And uh, uh, if they do, then, then they'll just keep spending recklessly. And then the other states who were not spending recklessly were paying more into the entire system, right? They're getting punished. Again, savers being punished and uh, responsible people being punished. And then they're going to start spending like crazy. And again, perfect recipe for literally hyperinflation. This will also help to stimulate inflation. Imagine a world where the elder, elderly collect entitlements while the young collect welfare. And nobody works while the stock market rises to record highs with runaway inflation. That's the future, literally, I think we're going to see very soon. By very soon, I don't know. I, I'm i not exactly sure, but I can't see this going further. Like, five years from now, we're going to already be there for sure, in my opinion. Can this happen six months from now? Can it happen two months from now? Yeah, I, I just don't know how long, because I don't know how long the rest of the world will continue their capital flight into the U.S. stock market and economy because the U.S. looks the strongest because it could get away with printing money and not causing inflation. Meanwhile, emerging markets can't print money without causing inflation. That's why all world currencies are pretty much crashing versus the dollar, especially the euro recently. And that's why half of my private members from my private group are foreigners because gold is hitting record all-time highs like every week meanwhile for in the u.s for people who who get paid in dollars it doesn't seem like that it just seems like we're testing all-time highs do you see how that works the u.s looks more this is the milkshake theory again brent johnson the u.s looks better the more it prints because it could bail itself out at the expense of the rest of the world. So therefore capital flies into the U.S. Dollar demand is still high. While everyone took out dollar denominated death, debt. Well it is death. Uh, debt uh, that includes uh, sovereign wealth funds. That includes corporate, foreign corporations, financial institutions and everything. I don't want to get into the foreign swap lines and all that. It gets kind of um, complicated. But in a nutshell, the U.S. looks the best right now because it could get away with printing. And they will continue to print, and they will do UBI, they'll do student loan forgiveness, they'll do everything while they could still get away with it by keeping the dollar sort of art of... So if they didn't print money, this scenario that just happened the past two months... It would shoot the dollar so high and it would make it so strong that it's actually negative for the economy and really bad for our trade deficit would explode. And our businesses would go under because we couldn't sell anything. Uh, we couldn't sell anything to the rest of the world. We still do that at some level, right? Technically, the U.S. still has the second largest manufacturing, sort of. Again, it was in a bubble. We'll see at the end of this. 
uh, who's not wearing their shorts when the tide uh, pulls back out. Anyways, um, but in a nutshell, the U.S. has to print money to keep the dollar from getting becoming too strong, so they will. And because they can do that and print, and print, it sort of sucks in the rest of the world's wealth and capital. But it's all fiat, guys. It's not real wealth. Again, fiat is just a measuring stick. It just measures goods and services. If you actually... So that's why the dollar is doomed to fail. Because the U.S.'s goods and services don't justify the strength in the fiat. And no, the military doesn't either. And oil doesn't either. Oil, like it just doesn't. The petrodollar is gone. So eventually the debt, because fiat is actually credit, debt, in the end game of all this is going to be inflation. So I I agree with both um, sides of this uh, argument within like the gold bug uh, sound money Austrian uh, community. I agree with Brent Johnson, but I also agree with Peter Schiff. I just think Brent Johnson's coming first, and then Peter Schiff's. They're, they're theories, right? So, but he, but both are bullish for metals. Okay. All right, let's get into the news real quick. Um. States, certain states are just, I mean, they're just draconian. They're just destroying their own economies. That's why they shouldn't bail them out. And then people will just move out of those states, right? And then people will see how these left-ran states are, I mean, it's like Soviet-style draconian stuff. I mean, it's pretty obvious if you haven't noticed. That's why I think... Um, Orange Man still has a good chance. Although, who knows who's really going to run against him. They could play some tricks, right? Alright. So, it's bad. Massive earnings downside. Surprises send record hope into 2021 at best. Listen. Earnings per share. Revenues. Just cratered. Collapsed for all these corporations. Now this is the this is like how Wall Street thinks because they are conditioned to buy every dip, and that's just that punch protection team, and the Fed right through BlackRock <laughs> buy stocks. Um, Wall Street knows that they can't let the the stock market pop, the bubble pop and crash completely, right? So that's what they're all betting on. They're just betting on the fact that they could keep the music playing. Longer and longer. Whatever. I don't care. I don't go... Like, I don't go long. Um, I mean, sometimes I do with the ETFs for trades. But I don't invest long. Like, long term or anything in the stock market. Because I know at any given day, it could be in one day. It just, it just all goes to crap. So I wouldn't risk doing that. That's why I invest in uh, metals and miners, right? The mining stocks have been outperforming. I mean, gold has been outperforming the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones if you adjust it for inflation. The mining stocks are going to... It doesn't matter how high equities go. If you adjust it for inflation, you're losing money in the end. That's what, that's what it's going to come out to. Maybe not right now, but give it some time. The mining stocks will outperform so much that you will not... Adjusted for inflation. They are adjusted for inflation, literally. Um, you're going to make massive gains. Go to my website if you want to join the private group. It's a one-time payment. Then you get the report. And then you get an invitation for the private group. And that's 10 bucks a month. If you can't get a hold of me, it's very easy. There's many ways to get a hold of me. Like I'm probably the easiest person to get a hold of. Just go in the links below the video and... Message me on Telegram. So world stocks. Here's the green line. World stocks green line going up. 
<laughs> earnings. Like, past Great Depression levels. Just, there are no earnings. They're just losses. It's a dystopian we live in. And the only reason why is because we have central banks, right? S&P and earnings per share expectations. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. So with futures forecasting the Fed to cut rates to minus 40 basis points in December 2020, is it any surprise that an an analysts are pushing off recovery hopes? So there's the futures for the Fed for the Fed funds rate. That's people guessing, the market guessing um, where rates are going to be in the future. They're guessing it's going to be negative 40 basis points. Now, Powell has come out and said, we do not want to do negative interest rates. I mean, that's that's the right thing to do. <laughs> because if they do, there's no point in keeping your money. Guys, you're, you're going to be losing money if you keep it in the bank, literally. Um, and it's so destructive for the economy. Very, very destructive. Ask any European, Western European, how that's working out for them. Um, they're better off just stimulating QE. Just, there's no point. Just keep it at zero or somewhere around there. Just not negative and then just keep printing. You're better off doing that in my opinion. Maybe there's something I don't know. Maybe they're scared of the bond market blowing up, which is, but they could cap it, you know. Every time it goes up, they uh, just print more and buy more treasuries, right? Monetizing the debt. Yields hit session high after Fed cuts Treasury QE to just seven billion. Here's the problem: it's QE infinity for call that for a reason. Every time they pull back the money, uh, the burr machine, you're gonna see bonds spike. And if bonds spike, I made this chart. It's very nice. This is my chart. I never seen anyone else do this on the ten year uh, yield. I made this chart, right? If the 10-year yield, I'm telling you, gets above like one, um, the market's going to start dumping. If it gets back above 1.6, I think it's party's over. The music stopped playing, not enough seats. These Monopoly Corps are going to crash too. So that's a good thing though. Listen, th there needs to be a crash one way or another. It's better we get a crash than the stock market keeps going higher, higher like Venezuela while everyone else uh, starves on the streets. Uh, and you know, they're going to blame capitalism, which is, there's no capitalism left, guys. Um, it's just a giant Ponzi at this point. And it's going to really piss people off. I mean, Wall Street, <laughs> the, the stocks keep going higher, but but everyone else is just, you know there's massive inflation and people starving all right um no the lockdown driven savings mirage won't save the economy savings rate versus gdp and deficit interesting the fiscal and monetary response to the uh, nano zombie created a surge in savings while many hope those savings will go back to work the savings mirage won't save the economy in recent weeks there has been a good bit of chatter about the surge in the savings rate the rate has now jumped to the highest level seen in the last couple of decades suggesting the consumer is now well positioned for a consumption comeback yeah again i don't agree with this this is my thoughts I feel like people are saving money, but they're not paying off their credit cards. They're actually maxing them out. And they're just saving that money because they're so worried. Like, I, I need this to eat later on because I lost my job and my job might not come back. And maybe the maybe they'll stop sending me free money, right? Like, 1200 bucks was nothing. Uh, for for an American, I mean, 1200 uh a middle class that's nothing that's pretty much one month's worth of 
for one person bills and food if you're a minimalist in the u.s and that's for like not even living in the city if you live in the city i don't know i i don't know that's why there's mile long lines of people in their thirty thousand dollar new cars at the food banks oh yeah i i just want to make a comment on this i've been driving around uh before i continue with this and i see so many people buying cars are they smart not anymore they thought they were smart they thought they were brilliant they're like oh now's the time to go buy a vehicle i got 1200 bucks for down payment and right now the car prices have dropped dramatically but now everyone's going out the smart people who have savings left are going out and buying used vehicles not so much new just lightly used vehicles and some beaters and um they think they're brilliant well just well because everyone just did that a large percentage of people did do that like a decent amount because all i see are temp tags everywhere that means that the prices are still artificially high because there's demand still just wait till just wait a few more months six months or something and you'll see that once those savers have bought up all their vehicles now then the demand is completely gone and the glut is still there unless this is the caveat they come out with ubi universal basic income and it's like a decent amount like two grand a month then all of a sudden again the used car market's gonna get propped up the prices will still go back up and um I won't say they will they will go back up, but they will stay at a constant because people aren't going to be getting credit. Banks are not lending anyone anything anymore. All right, the credit gravy train's over. Uh, so the cheat, you know, giving anyone credit, it's it's over, guys. If you don't have an income, like if you don't have a job, what are you going to put down on the application? I get UBI. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't come down to that. Anyways, that'll prop up the market. It won't totally implode. It just will prop it up. It might still fall further. It probably will fall further, like another 10% or something. But if people get UBI, it'll stop the, the used car market from imploding, the prices for the vehicles. Um, either way, I don't care because I'm still looking, right? I'm still in the market. Um, I'm waiting longer. You know, patience pays. Uh, in fold because if they do come out with ubi and they prop the prices up a little bit my mining stocks are doing like rocket moves all right they're I'm, they're going to the moon so whatever actually I, for us for the people in the private group all this crazy stuff this ubi debt forgiveness all this it's all bullish for us all that money is going to go to our pockets my pocket. It's going to make its way through the economy. Money velocity is going to pick up. Inflation picks up. People panic. And, P and Wall Street notices, oh, look, mining stocks are the most undervalued thing in the entire world. All of that money is going to flow slowly but surely to our pockets. Okay? Again, I was talking about windfall taxes. Um, they're going to do that on the companies the mining companies not so much you it's less um you know it's more acceptable but that's going to come later down the road and it's not going to matter your gains are like i feel like my gains are the percentage gains are going to be so large it's, it, it's going to not affect you as much and not just that you could sell prior to them doing that i don't know we strategize all right so but with physicals when you go to sell those they that's going to be harder right to cash out on on the physical stuff in my opinion i could be wrong i could be completely wrong about that it might be just the opposite either way i'm very tuned in and we move quickly right uh deficits are self-financing deficits push interest rates down deficits raise private savings what that doesn't make sense 
Okay, the hope is that the cash hoards will eventually begin to flow back into the economy through increased applications for mortgages, autos, and durable goods. That increase in consumption will also lead to decrease in staggering 3.8 trillion deficit by the end of the year. No, that's not going to happen. Do you want to know why? Because all the small businesses just went bust. They went under. All the small, a lot of small businesses have lost, have gone bankrupt. People aren't going to just go out and spend. I mean, some people just did. They bought used cars, but you need a car, right? Especially in the U.S. Distances are far in between. But um, it's not like people are going to go spend um, on other things when they don't have jobs. <laughs> And I'm going to show you guys the jobs uh, numbers that came out yesterday. This is, listen, I mean, mainstream, these analysts, these economists, these Ivy Leagues they came out of, they're just, either they're fooling the public for their own invested interests and their own portfolios, their own bags, or they're, they're very stupid. All right, the savings mirage, the understanding why the savings rate is not what it appears to be. You have to understand its underlying construction. The website howmuch.com recently provided that calculation of us, a breakdown of the average American spending, average consumer unit expenses in 2018. This is 2018, guys. All right, look at this. I'm going to post this in the newsroom. This is a nice visual. They don't have percentages. It's just, it's just a visual. They should have put a percentage there. I don't know. Food. This is going to grow. This is going to be huge. After 2020. I hope they... I'm, someone... I mean, we need to keep track of this visual to see how it changes over time. So this is going to become huge the home will probably become huge because maintenance is going to become more expensive so we're so will utilities equipment all that the cheap uh equipment remember i went out and i bought a chainsaw for 100 bucks because i don't want to i don't feel like paying 400 right now for it um yeah i want to buy an american built one but opportunity costs i'd rather throw 300 into mining stocks and uh, physical, let's say, then buy a four hundred dollar chainsaw right now that lasts forever. Because that three hundred, maybe a few years from now, will be thirty thousand, and then I could buy that chainsaw. Maybe the chainsaw price will double. It'll be eight hundred or a thousand, but you see the difference, right? Opportunity costs. You either spend four hundred now. Or you spend 100 The difference is maybe tens of thousands if your investment works out in the next few years. Yeah, that's how I think about everything in life. Opportunity cost. Transportation? Well, gas prices. These are insane numbers. So income before is seventy eight thousand, income after is sixty seven thousand, and this is for a uh, middle class. Average annual expenditures is sixty one thousand. So you only have six thousand left over for savings, which I guarantee you goes to. Who knows? Like other things that people buy. Vacations, you know. But this is for probably a family, a, a family of four. So you have two working adults. They make 78. Then after, you know, they get their shakedown at 67,000. Good visual. This was 2018. Um, what if one of them loses their job? What if both do? And then they get two grand a month. That's twenty four thousand. And I think they, I think they take their share out of that too. Your UBI. What a scam. And then, and then, 
I mean, yeah, so. So medium personal incomes by quintile. This is interesting. So middle is 40 to 60%. That's probably fallen down to 25% after all of this. That's um, the blue line. The bottom 20% is this light blue line. It's down here. They essentially have no, um, I mean, no savings whatsoever. The bottom 20 to 40% is the spread line. Majority of Americans are below 50 grand a year. Like, I think it's like 60%. Something like that. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly the percentage. Maybe this is another chart. Meanwhile, the top 5%. Doing great. Porsche sales and Lambo sales are just through the roof right now. And this is going to cause, um, you know class uh divide it's just gonna it's gonna cause class warfare in a good way it's it's a good thing but in the bad it's also a bad thing right if you're an entrepreneur like myself i am gonna become a target um and it's i'm not like like if you have one million bucks you're not super rich that's like the new middle uh, that's the that's the new upper middle class okay um if you make like, okay, if you have your total wealth is under 10 mil, you're still not the elite, guys. <laughs> Even 50 mil, you're not the elite. The elite are like in the billions, okay? They're the ones who are really benefiting off of this. But yeah, I mean, currently, a lot of upper middle class people, they have stocks, a lot of stocks, and they think they're rich. But I'm telling you, when you adjust it for inflation, even if it goes higher and higher, they're going to be losing money. And then eventually it will crash and then they lose everything. So those people worked hard and they created jobs. They're the small business owners. And a lot of the upper middle class is going to get wiped out now. So envy is, envy is the most disgusting thing in the world. This means I don't want to get in. I'm going to get mad. Let's just say I've had my cars keyed by pieces of shit. All right. Uh, negative savings rate for the bottom 90% of the population. Yeah, they have negative savings, guys. If you actually look at their credit card debt and then the money they have in their savings doesn't balance out. That's the problem. They're just going to stop paying their credit cards. That's another reason why the financials are struggling to rebound with the rest of the stock market. And what I mean by the rest of the stock market is like 10 mega monopolies, the you know, the fangs. Just, you know, they're the tide raising all ships because they're in index funds, cookie cutter, just giant baskets of um, index funds. Like 40% of the index fund is in like Apple. <laughs> and then the rest is smaller companies. So the index fund goes up and then money pours into the index fund. And then some of the money trickles to the smaller stocks. That's why the entire market goes together. There is no price discovery. There is no free market. Do you understand? Thanks to Ray Dalio and the central banks. The simple reason why 80% of Americans can't save money. Let's take a look. So income needed of a family of four to break even. It's above 50000 Difference in 2017 incomes between top 20% and bottom 80%. So the bottom 80% is struggling. The bottom 80% is this red down here. And it's below the break-even line. So a lot of, uh, most people, 80% of them, are actually financing their livelihoods with credit, with debt. And they don't really have savings. This is the upper middle class, this blue line. It's the top 20%. And then, of course, you have the 
top 5%. They're just doing great. I was talking about a bell curve in uh, the private group. Look it up on Investopedia, bell curve. Look at this line. This looks like a perfect uh, large cyclical cycle. That's And these cycles are all bell curves. They go up and then they come back down. Well, it looks like we peaked out. Um, so this uh, consumer debt as percentage of wages is the dotted line so debt has been rising versus the percentage of your wages so your debt has been outpacing your wages so pc as percentage of gdp personal consumption rising personal debt levels led to increases in consumption in excess of GDP growth huh what's this orange dotted line PC PCE as percentage of GDP Since 2000, rising personal debt levels only maintains consumption at a level which supports economic growth. Right. Okay, so this is what I've been trying to tell you guys. With all this monopoly uh, confetti money being made into existence, the more people, the more cash they pump into the economy and the system, the more indebted corporations become and private individuals. And at some point, your debt is so large, you you can't keep spending. And if everyone files, you know, chapter 11 or 7 or whatever, what does that do to the economy? Well, businesses go under. People lose everything. Things get repoed, like vehicles. That's what happened in 2008, but this time around, it's going to be it's going to be way worse. All right, here's something alarming. Truck drivers suffer largest job loss on record after April bloodbath leaves 83,000 unemployed. Listen, guys, the the largest employer in the U.S., I believe, are the, the largest employment in the U.S. is truck driving. Now, these people are the lifeblood of the nation. They... They, you know, all goods are being transported by them. And the supply chain broke, and now they're losing their jobs. And that's a lot of, it's mainly males doing this. There's some women, but it's going to be a lot of pissed off um, men out there, let's just say. Thursday, we noted April orders for Class 8 heavy trucks fell at fell a staggering 73% year over year and a 44% from March. The worst order numbers on record is the shutdowns have put the trucking industry on the cusp of freight cliff. I mean, it's just devastating. And this isn't going to like stop once the lockdowns or they come off because the small businesses and the mid-sized businesses that are going under right now they're not going to be ordering things again like a few months from now. What I'm trying to tell you guys, it's we're not returning to normal. We're not returning to how things were. Not even freaking close. And this is the bloodline of the country. One of the most, if not the most crucial part is transportation and logistics. All right, here we go. Worst jobs report in history. 20.5 million jobs lost as unemployment rate hits record 14.7%. Uh, I was just looking at the time. While economic fundamentals uh, ceased to matter about a month ago, when the Fed, by the way, this is all by Tyler Durden, you guys know. Um, fundamentals, I want to give him credit. This is where you get your news, guys. 
Uh, fundamental ceased to matter about a month ago when the Fed went nuclear and not only injected trillions in the bond and repo market, but also directly backstopped the corporate bond market with many expecting it will do the same in equities. There is something utterly surreal and terrifying watching stocks surge as the U.S. reports its worst jobs report in history, which it did moments ago when the BLS reported that in April, the U.S. lost record 20.5 million jobs. Not quite as bad as the 22 million expected, but as this level, what does it matter? The biggest drop in history and 10x more than the 22 more than the 2 million jobs lost at the peak of the Great Depression. Now listen, back then there was less people. I get it. So guess what? 2 million people losing their jobs back in during the Great Depression. You could probably equate it to... I don't know what the population was back then, but it was like... It wasn't as much as today, right? It was like one-third the size, maybe... So let's just go off of that. I don't know how close that is. It's probably close. So 100 million people during then, 2 million, that's 2%. It's not 14%. So that would be, yeah. The change in total non-farm payroll employment for February was revised down by 45,000 from... I don't want to go too much into detail of all this. You guys can read it on your own. It's bad. Okay? So I, look at this chart. I like visuals. I'm not a numbers. Like, I'm, I'm more of a visual person, right? Look at that. That's all you need to know. And they're not coming back anytime soon. It's way above the... 2008 2009 financial crisis at some point this will stop and come back down the question is when will it stop i have a feeling that the websites for all the states have been down okay because i talked to a friend he's he's trying he's been trying for months and he can't because it's always down so this is going to continue to rise probably throughout the entire summer how scary is that very, very scary stuff. It says temporarily out of work. Eh, I think it might become permanent. These charts are just hockey sticks. Next article. The NASDAQ is now bigger than the rest of the world's stock market. <laughs> after after the, the unemployment, the Nasdaq is now bigger than the rest of the world's stock market. Gee, I wonder why. Maybe it's because we have these companies in the on the Nasdaq. Amazon, all time record highs, guys. All time record highs. It kind of makes sense because it's the only place you could uh, buy things from, but come on. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, the younger generations, if they ever, if freedom of speech prevails and education and online self-learning, self-educating prevails, and the younger generations find out what has happened here in the past few decades, the older generations, and even mine, right? The Gen X and the Millennials, I mean, the universe will pay it back. But the young, I feel bad for the younger generations. Like anyone right now, like under the age of like, I don't know, 20. Like they have no idea that they're, that the people, the, the older generations are just literally selling them out like it's just disgusting that's very immoral you know that's why a lot of the sheep the normies they like keeping their heads in the sand because they deep down somewhere they have to know that they're part of the problem as well society is part of the problem 
um, a good example of that would be fake book, right? People go on social media and they try to impress all the people they hate with pictures showing them like they have the best lives ever. Most of them do that. That's why I got off of there like four years ago. It's a great mirror to society and where it's, where it's come. And that's just the cycles, guys. Remember, good times create weak people. And then the bad times create strong people. And strong people create the good times. Buybacks are back. Stocks soar even as equity outflows hit two-month high. So equity outflows is the boomers selling off stocks so they have cash to live off of because they're very concerned. They're not that dumb. They know that, you know, these unemployment numbers, it's pretty risky to hold stocks. And they're not that dumb, all right? So they're like, well, I'm just going to get out now on this giant bull trap. Or maybe it's the smart money getting out. Or the smarter money. I'm not saying... Smart money got out before all this. And they're in mining stocks already. I know. Because I have software and I can see which funds and even individuals who buy this stuff. All right. So, so with record high outflows, how's the market going higher? BlackRock, <laughs> QE. A tragic record for the first time ever. More than half of the U.S. population is not working. Yeah. All right, let me read this real quick. Today's jobs report was, as expected and as previously discussed, absolutely horrific. Although, as Bank of America points out, that there was one silver lining, which is Larry Kudlow quickly latched onto. With 72% of the jobs lost being reflected as temporary layoffs, workers should be able to be more seamlessly rehired as the economy reopens. No, no. The small businesses did not get those SBAs. A lot of them didn't. So I'm wondering, are they going to send them out again? And and Because corporations were taking them, of course. And the banks were forking it out to their buddies, right? And uh, their biggest customers. Uh, however, the longer this pandemic... Oh, I said it. Oh, I'm done. It's over. You guys can find me on other platforms. You just have to search MMG. <laughs> All right, goes on. The more likely that what was temporarily becomes permanent, and as we pointed out in the previous post, even baseline cases see unemployment not returning back to normal until 2022 or later. It's not coming back to normal. Probably not for a very long time, like decades. That's my fear. Offsetting this, good news. However, there was one especially scary aspect of today's jobs report that has not gotten enough pub publicity. Namely that, as BOFA writes, the unemployment to population ratio plunged to a record low, with only 51% of the population working. <laughs> and you know what? Half of that 51% are, t are like part-time jobs. Probably. Inversely, this means that in April, 49% of the... U.S. population was not working. It's insane. I have more work than ever, guys. Don't worry about me. I And I've been driving around every day. Like, nothing, nothing's really changed for me, literally. But I notice how things have changed on the outside world. There's a lot less traffic. On the weekend, surprisingly, there's a lot of traffic. It's like any other weekend. People are just still shopping. Um... But, you know, in the morning, it's like, it's, it's nowhere near what it was. <laughs> um, and you know what's weird? Like, I, um, I've been out and about this entire time. And you can kind of tell, like, from the people who have been, like, literally sitting in their homes this entire time versus the people... Who've been working and they're out and about. The people who've been working out and about. They, they, it's like nothing's really changed for them. They walk around. They laugh and talk. And they still have jobs. And they, they're absolutely not a, not affected by this. Meanwhile, the other person who's maybe gone out twice in the past two months. Who has no job now. 
is walking around like it's like um some dystopian nightmare for them and they're just concerned you can kind of see it in their faces and probably depressed and who knows there's probably people who watch me who feel like that and i i feel for you this sucks and honestly people need to be more angry because none of this had to happen this this was done on purpose i believe you know, Sweden. Look at Sweden. They're fine. They did none of this. And they're fine. So, like, I'm angry. And I'm not even, in, like, affected by this. But the people who are, I mean, you guys should be really, like, your livelihood's gone, right? I I don't know what else to say. I'm actually disappointed that people aren't angrier, but the sheep are sheep. Uh, a V-shaped recovery will not be possible. Today's job losses reflect a 40% GDP crash. 40% <laughs> GDP crash. GDP is already negative. I mean, GDP can barely, like, get to 3%. It's labor market slack likely to remain unsubstantially even in late 2021. Yeah, it's just, um, it's bad. Let's take a look at, well, for one, the futures are green, of course. Um, I'm going to make a TA video. I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, we're coming up on an hour. I don't want to hit that one hour mark. Nobody's going to watch this video. Um, I'll do a TA video tomorrow. All right, guys. Till next time, smash them likes. Go to my website. Join the private group. Leave anything in the comment section. I will reply and um, share my videos. It's the only way my channel is growing legitimately, seriously. And uh, I'll continue to do this if I continue to grow. But if I don't, you know, peace out. <laughs> Everyone on their own. Until next time.